Hi, my name is Stephen Finkbeiner. I'm a professor of neurology and physiology at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm a director and investigator at the Gladstone Institutes. So iPS cells are really exciting uh, for developing models of neurodegenerative disease for a couple of reasons. One is that the cells that we are most interested in, brain cells, are really difficult to collect from patients directly. But this provides a way to be able to collect a cell from a patient, turn it into a stem cell, and then turn it into the types of brain cells that are most relevant for that disease. Another issue is that for a lot of neurodegenerative diseases, for example, most patients with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease get those diseases for reasons we don't understand. So it's very difficult to model diseases in the laboratory using non-human models uh, when we don't understand the cause. But in this case, we can take a cell from a patient, convert it to a stem cell, and to be able to study it in the laboratory knowing that that person had the, patient had the disease that we're, uh, that we're studying. One of the major things that uh, we focus on are neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, and ALS. And we use induced pluripotent stem cells as a major model system for studying those diseases. In the last two years, there have been a number of advances in the cult approach to culturing iPS cells. So a major issue has been heterogeneity, being able to develop recipes to be able to take a stem cell and then turn it into the cell type that you want. And there have been a lot of advances in trying to optimize those protocols to make them faster, cheaper, more efficient. Another really big area that, where there's been a lot of progress is trying to build more physiologically relevant systems. We know, for example, that the brain's composed of multiple cell types, and so being able to develop more three-dimensional systems with multiple cell types interacting, working together, more like a tissue, uh, has been a major goal and a major area where work's been done the last year. There are a lot of exciting applications for this IPSC technology to understanding the mechanisms of neurodegenerative diseases and to finding treatments. A lot of us are using these cells to differentiate into the cell types that are most affected in these diseases in patients, and then to try to uncover molecular and cellular phenotypes that are similar to what we see in patients. Uh, and then to use those phenotypes both to understand what causes them uh, and to find hopefully therapies and treatments to be able to mitigate them. With all the excitement around IPSC technology, there's been a lot of effort by a variety of members of the community to develop tools to make it easier for people to use them and to be able to more fully harness the power that they have. One of the uh, contributions that my laboratory has made has been an invention called the robotic microscope. This technology allows you to, in a high throughput way, follow individual cells longitudinally. And the reason it's so powerful is that as a single cell technology, it allows us to be able to deal with that heterogeneity problem that's inherent in some of our IPSC culture techniques. It also allows us to study different subpopulations of cells in more three-dimensional tissue like organoids. And the cool thing is we can use some of the same tools that are used to analyze patient data from clinical trials, which are much more sensitive than the tools that are normally available for high throughput screening. So it makes it 100 to 1,000 times more sensitive for uncovering phenotypes and for doing screens for therapeutics. I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the next year. I think uh, the community is at a really exciting place, and I think there are a lot of initiatives underway. I think a big focus remains heterogeneity because uh, uh, that affects how useful these cells are. And I think there are going to be a number of efforts to make protocols even more optimized so that we can make uh, less heterogeneous cultures when we want to, and to come up with other protocols that allow us to make three-dimensional cultures on purpose with different cell types. I think overall, uh, the effect will be to make these uh, protocols and systems easier for academics to be able to, newcomers to be able to use these systems um, for the research they want to do. Thank you so much for listening. I hope the information was uh, useful. If you want to learn more about the work that we do, please visit our websites at gladstone.org or tobycorettcenter.org. Thank you very much.